High school football from across the desert southwest is here. Varsity Blitz starts right now. There, there was no type of evaluation for our, our young offensive linemen. We have a new quarterback, you know, to get his reads in. So it's just been us going against us for the last uh, 12 or so practices. They just want to hit somebody. The Rams see their <laughs> first live action against another opponent since last November. Good, good evening, while. everybody, and welcome to week two of, of the Varsity Blitz. I'm Scott Gross alongside Brandon Mejia. Yes, very excited to be a part of this. We kick off our coverage tonight, Scott, mm -hmm. with the Antelope Union Rams in their season in home opener, a long-awaited <laughs> journey against the Honey Badgers of Highland Prep. Scott, if you remember, the Rams only played three games a year ago in this year's preseason four-team scrimmage with Kofa, mm -hmm. San Pasquale, and Calipatria was wiped out due to COVID concerns. These kids got to be eager. <laughs> got to be eager. That's play. right. Now, with no one to compare themselves to and some new faces on offense, especially at quarterback, where three-year starter Trey Holbin left via graduation, how would the Rams look to start the season? Let's find out. To Buckeye Field and the Antelope Rams honor beloved fallen teammate Chris Pelfrey. Chris's brother and father carried out his jersey number five. Pelfrey was followed by his teammates who took the field versus an opponent for the very first time this year. So again, how would they fare? Opening drive, Highland Prep hands off to Cohen Hill, and he's grabbed up and gobbled by defensive lineman Jose Soto. He's a player head coach Gary Moldine pointed out as a team leader. Third down, the give is to Hill again. This time, Stephen Castro's there for the tackle. Defense looking good, and the Rams force a punt. Joe Whitley takes over the starting role as quarterback and hands off to Miggy Carrillo, and the speedster tries to turn the corner. It's stopped. will put on a move, gain a few more yards. It was a lot of running for only a three-yard gain. Now, Whitley's first pass is a varsity quarterback. He rolls to the left, and it's eh, incomplete. Rams forced a punt and a three and out. The Rams defense was strong, and in the first half, Highlands' Trenton Biddle drops back and is picked up by Miggy Carrillo. Carrillo puts on a nice move on the quarterback right here, whoop, and then he mm -hmm. takes it to the house for the score. Rams add the extra point and take a 7-0 lead. The defense leading the way for the Rams. Next drive, it'll be Biddle again. He's going to want to throw the football, something he probably should not be doing. Biddle heaves it deep, and check out the one-handed grab by Honey Badger Tyler Hutton. Moments later, it's going to be on offense. It's going to be Hill up the middle, but watch the hit by the Rams. Steven Castro forces the fumble. Rams' Martin Hernandez recovers. The defense came to play, and the Rams hang on 20-16. to Luis Lopez joins us live from Buckeye Field with a recap. Luis... Quite a game for the defense, wasn't it? Hey guys, what's going on? I'm here at Antelope Union High School where the Rams are coming off a big win against the Highland Prep Honey Badgers. Now just to tell you about how this game went, it was initially a 0-0 game in the first quarter and then a pick six from Ant the Antelope Rams defense really got things going and things kind of took off there for the Antelope defense. I'm joined now by head coach Gary Malden who's coming off the 20-16 victory. Coach, your team and your defense had three pick sixes tonight. Why was your defense able to execute so well? They're just uh, a very quick, uh, well-disciplined, uh, athletic defense. And uh, the last few years, our defense has just been outstanding uh, with shutouts. We didn't get the shutouts tonight, but uh, they just stepped up and played a, a pretty decent game defensively tonight. And then how did it feel to play your first game in almost a year due to the pandemic? It felt really good. Uh, yeah, our last game here was a loss. That put us, actually, we were... Um, a 13 and 2 um, or 12 and 2 in our last 14 games now we're 13 and 2 at home so it just says for our home field advantage and our fans and stuff and so it's really cool to, to, to get this victory tonight all right coach well thank, thank you for joining me i really appreciate it thank you so much <laughs> so again just to recap what happened here tonight the antelope defense came through big with three pick sixes two of them came late in the fourth quarter to give them the win one the first came with about a minute 50 left and that was what gave them a 20 or sorry, that was what gave them the lead. And then Highland Prep, Honey Badgers would eventually get the ball back with the chance to retake the lead. They would, however, give up a massive pick six, and that would end up sealing it for Antelope Union High. So they end up winning their first game. And again, in about a year due to the pandemic, this is the first game action they've seen in quite some time. So I'm sure those guys were really happy to get that win. Obviously, it was a great scene here. Seats were completely filled. Everybody was out cheering on the Rams. So again, just a really good sight to see. Again, Antelope, Antelope Rams win 20 to 16. I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. 
<laughs> Thank you, Luis. Uh, Luis live from Buckeye Field. Now, on to our next game of the night. The Calexico Bulldogs were at home again at trying to get in the win column after a close loss to Palo Verde last week. You're right, Scott. Head coach Fernando Solano is molding a new culture, and the toughness was evident a week ago. Tonight, they welcome the Trojans of Castle Park to Ward Field. Teams 0-1 and looking for their first win of the season. The question is, can the Bulldogs make that happen? We take you to Ward Field again. The Bulldogs hungry to get their first win at home. Bulldogs really getting the, getting the pump on. And senior quarterback Abram Zazueta warming up. But the passing game would be minimal with the story of the night coming on the ground early on. First play from Ernesto Sanchez gets the handoff. And he's going to find the hole, pick up 20 on that one. Very next play. Andrew Ramirez would get the rock this time. He's going to move the chains and some gets tripped up in the in the end of the play there. But another first down for the Bulldogs. Can the momentum keep with the drive continue? Well, it'd come to a quick halt a few plays later as Andrew Ramirez again on the carry on this one. That's going to force a fourth down and stop things pretty quick. Orlando Martinez with the tackle there. Trojans take over at their own 42 plays later into the drive. The toss to Jalen Hopkins, and he's going to turn it up, quite frankly, all the way down the sideline. Goes into the Calexico territory. The speed proving too much to handle. That's good for six. The Trojans strike first. They mix, miss the extra point, lead by six. So the question is, can the Bulldog answer? This one time, Ernesto Sanchez is going to shake the tackle. Cut back to the middle. He's off to the races, folks. He may have a run of his own. Uh, he does. That's good for 80. He could put six on the board. Even the cameraman's getting a little shaken up there because he's got the heat on. They would miss the extra point as well. So we got ourselves a tied game at six. Now, after Calexico recovers on a fumble on the ensuing kickoff, the Bulldogs would with tricks, right? Read option. Didn't see that one coming. Zazuete again takes it himself, stays on his feet, finds the pylon for the score. Bulldogs take the lead. Run away with this one, quite frankly. Your score tonight, 60 to 6. Your final. The Bulldogs came to play. Kind of quite the bark there. <laughs> yeah, they did. Hey, thank you, Brandon. Hey, we have two games in the books, and uh, we should have had three, but Calipatria's season over was canceled due to COVID concerns. Now, did you know the last time the Hornets played was on Halloween night of 2019? They'll try again next week when they host Calexico at Veterans Field. Straight ahead, highlights from our big game in the Valley between Vincent Memorial and Southwest, plus a look at our out-of-town scoreboard. We'll be right back. Welcome to Toyota's National Sales Event. Thanks, I'm here for a great deal. Great deals are kind of our thing. You can save on the 2021s while they last. Like Camry, Venza, Corolla. Watching them come and go is really getting to my neck. <sighs> Occupational hazard this time of year. Gotta keep it loose. Get $750 cash back on the all-wheel drive Venza Hybrid. Or lease Venza for $289 per month. Plus, every new Toyota comes with Toyota Care. It all ends September 7th. Toyota, let's go places. Since 1981, play today. Possibilities are all around us. Everywhere we look, we see opportunity in unexpected places. And when we share our knowledge, vision, and connections, we turn great ideas into action in communities all around the world that we call home, like transforming an old bus to feed hungry children, or providing life-saving equipment to those who need it most. From fighting disease to rebuilding schools, together we can make real change happen. We're Rotary. We are people of action. Get involved today at rotary.org slash action. We will fight it, we'll defeat it. 
California. The time is near. The special election on whether to recall Governor Gavin Newsom is September 14th. If it happens, who from the vast choices will take California's top spot? A YouTuber, a former Olympian, or any of the dozens of candidates? News 11 and 13 on your side are teaming up to take you to the polls throughout the day and live from the recorder's office with initial results at 10 p.m. Join us as we provide complete coverage of this historic event. You're watching Varsity Blitz, the best highlights, the best plays, continuing right now. <laughs> I always start the season by seeing how we do in the first two or three games. Uh, right now, it's pretty unpredictable because uh, we have a very young group and we're still trying to figure out who can play. Welcome back, Brandon Mejia alongside Scott Gross. We just heard from Vincent Memorial head coach David Wong and what, he's, what he is going through seems to be a theme for a lot of prep football teams. A lot of inexperience taking the field this season. On top of that, a lot of teams, including the Southwest Eagles, didn't have much of a break from the spring season until now. Well, it's hard to be patient uh, no. through uh, the summer and, and growing pains of a young team. Tonight, Vincent Memorial looked to recover from a last week's loss as they hosted Southwest in the Scots opener, home opener, which ironically is played on Southwest home field with the Eagles ready to spread their wings. Let's go to El Centro for the Eagles and the Scots with sophomore Jacobo Elias getting this first start at quarterback for the Vincent Scots. The sophomore, he would have to shake off the rust early, getting the bad snap. He's bailed out by wide receiver Andre Rodriguez, who tries to save the play, but gets taken down by a pair of Eagles on the near side. Next play, Elias settles down, maneuvers in the pocket, and completes his first pass to Max Escaloni, and getting the sco Scots scoots to scoot down for a first down. But the drive would stall. Eagles' first possession, Estevan McDonough, gets the call and rips Vincent defense for a 20-yard gain. Then it'll be a Logan Youngers. Bides time and hits wide open Nate Smith for 18 yards. The Eagles knocking on the door and they would force it open. Youngers rolls to his right and hits Jonah. Make that Jonah Estrada for a 15-yard touchdown pass. Eagles draw first blood and they would stay aggressive going with the big fell in the two-point conversion seneca haynes bulldozes his way for the deuce just like a snowplow but the scots would answer quickly and it'd be elias scrambling right turns on the jets jukes a defender then is going to finish off the long run with a victory lap into the end zone 60 yard play gets vincent right back into it they also counter the eagles two-point conversion with one of their own as elias calls his own number blasting through two defenders coming up here into the end zone. The game is tied at eight. This game would go down to the wire, but the Eagles would eke out a one-point victory, 28-27. to 27. Wow, what a close one. What a good one to watch, indeed. And, well, if you didn't get to see those or get to see all the games, that's okay, because we're going to get you caught up as we speak. We saw the highlights of the first one, Calexico taking the win over Castle Park Antelope. In Highland Prep, not sure why that's not in, folks. I'm going to get that one for Antelope you. Antelope did win 20-16. to 16. They did. Not sure why it's not on the screen there. Brawley going to take the loss over Valley Center. And a couple more games you may not have noticed at home. That's okay. We still got them for you. West Hills going to win over Imperial 21-7. to 7. Point Loma loses to Central. Central taking the win 37-27. to 27. Yeah, and uh, let's uh, end it right now in our top plays of the game. Well, uh, there's your schedule. Let's uh, do our plays of the day right now. Thank you, everybody. And there's the wonderful Morena and doing everything that she does. Yeah, she does an amazing job. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Those are the top plays. We'll see you next week.